So let's continue with our work in Mendelian genetics and heredity and let's look at some more examples of sex link traits and how to use our the Punnett square to figure out possible outcomes of offspring and we're going to look at first hemophilia and hemophilia is a disorder in which the blood does not clot properly um, when the blood can't clot properly you have ex excessive bleeding could be external or internal uh, causes greater injury or damage to the system uh, symptoms include large or deep bruising joint pain and swelling unexplained bleeding like nosebleeds and blood in urine or stool um, if you have hemophilia they can treat it by giving you injections of clotting factors or plasma carrying platelets to help with the clotting or they may have to do what's called cauterizing where they actually fuse the wound together with heat uh, but in most cases hemophilia is a recessive trait carried on the X chromosome again so we're looking at an X chromosome recessive trait and the alleles we're going to use for this this trait is capital X capital H for normal blood X with a lowercase h is hemophilia and the Y from the male will carry no trait so our genotypes and phenotypes for this situation we're going to have the homozygous X capital H X capital H that is a female with normal blood X capital H X lowercase h so heterozygous this is a female with hemophilia as a carrier which she means she does not have hemophilia but she carries the gene and can pass it on to her offspring then we have the homozygous recessive X little h X little h and this is a female with hemophilia again with a recessive trait it takes both recessive alleles in order for a female to get the gene and show the trait for our other two genotypes we have X capital H Y this is a male with normal blood and then we have X lowercase y lowercase h with a y and that is a male male with hemophilia it only takes one recessive gene for the male to get the recessive gene so let's look at some examples of how to use the Punnett square and we're gonna cross a normal female and a male who is a hemophiliac so the normal female is going to be X capital H X capital H she's going to be homozygous for normal blood the male who has hemophilia is X lowercase h Y segregating the alleles across the top two columns we have X capital H X capital H and segregating the male alleles we have X lowercase h with a Y so now we're gonna cross the alleles so the female provides an X with a capital H the male provides an X with a lowercase h we have a female who is a carrier of hemophilia X capital H from the mother X lowercase h from the father we have another female who's a carrier when the mother gives an X capital H and the father gives his Y sperm making a male offspring but this male offspring is normal does not have hemophilia and the mother provides an X capital H and the lower the Y from the male we now have a male offspring who is normal so our outcomes are 50 percent carrier females and 50% normal males so let's cross a female who is a carrier so that's gonna look like X capital H X lowercase h and a male who is a hemophiliac that's gonna look like X lowercase h with a Y segregating the alleles we get X capital H and X lowercase h across the top columns X lowercase h and Y 
on the two rows. And now if we do the crosses, we end up with X capital H, X lowercase h, carrier female, X lowercase h, X lowercase h. This is a female with hemophilia because it is homozygous for the recessive trait and the female gets the trait if she is homozygous recessive. X capital H with a Y gives us a normal male and X lowercase h with the Y. This gives us a male who is a hemophiliac who has hemophilia. Our outcomes 25% carrier female this first block, 25% hemophiliac female this second block, 25% normal male this block on the lower left, and 25% hemophiliac male this block on the lower right. So let's see what happens when we cross a hemophiliac female and a normal male. So the hemophiliac female is going to be x lowercase h, x lowercase h. The normal male is going to be x capital H, y. When we segregate the alleles across the top, x lowercase h, x lowercase h, and we segregate the male alleles on the left, X capital H for the first row, Y for the second row, we end up having to cross and the first outcome is a carrier female. Second outcome, carrier female. Female because she's XX, carrier because she has the gene lowercase h, but she does not have hemophilia. The next two offspring are going to be males, x lowercase h, y, a male with hemophilia, and then an x lowercase h with a y, another hemophiliac male. So our outcomes, 50% of the offspring could be carrier females, and 50% of the offspring will be males that are hemophiliacs. Let's look at Rett syndrome. Rett syndrome is a rare genetic mutation. It affects the brains of developing girls. Despite being caused by a gene mutation, Rett syndrome is rarely inherited. Uh, most infants seem healthy during their first six or so months, but then over time they lose coordination, develop problems with their speech and the use of their hands, and the symptoms eventually stabilize over many years. There are no cures, but medications, physical and speech therapy, some nutritional support helps. You can manage the symptoms, you can prevent complications, but, and you can try to improve the quality of life. Most females with Rett syndrome do not get to a point where they then have offspring, where they have children. So that is why it is very rarely passed to male offspring. And this is why it is primarily a genetic mutation for girls. Now this is a dominant trait carried on the X chromosome. So the alleles for Rett syndrome are X capital R is Rett syndrome, X lowercase r would be normal, and the Y again carries no trait. So for our genotypes and phenotypes for Rett syndrome, we're going to look at X capital R, X capital R, homozygous female with Rett syndrome, X capital R, X lowercase r, this is a heterozygous female with Rett syndrome. X lowercase r, X lowercase r, this is a normal female. The male would be X capital R, Y would have Rett syndrome, and X lowercase r, Y would be a normal male. But because most females with Rett syndrome never go on to have offspring, very rarely does it get passed 
to the male offspring. But if we were to look at this, if we were to take a normal female with Rett syndrome, a normal female with a male who has Rett syndrome, our case would look like X lowercase r, X lowercase r is the normal female. X capital R, Y would be the Rett male. We segregate out the alleles as we have in the past, and we end up having to cross an X capital R with an X lowercase r. This would be a female with Rett syndrome an X capital R with the lowercase r. That would be a female with Rett syndrome, heterozygous. X little r with a Y. This would be a male normal. And X lowercase r, Y. This would also be a normal male. So we have uh, outcomes of 50% Rett females who are heterozygous and 50% male who are normal. Let's look at one more quick example. Let's cross a male and a female who do not have Rett syndrome. So X lowercase r, X lowercase r is the female. X lowercase r, Y is the male. Segregate our alleles as we always have. And this would give us a situation where X lowercase r, X lowercase r, normal female. X lowercase r, X lowercase r, normal female. X lowercase r with a Y, normal male. And X lowercase r, X uh, with a Y, also a normal male. So our outcomes are 50% normal females, 50% normal males.